Welcome back to Studios and Dragons. Um, apologies for the little bit of a later upload than normal. Studio has been very busy with a lot of major projects, which we'll talk about a little bit, a little bit about at the end. Um, but just stay tuned for those with all of our socials. Um, but for now, we'll move into our next episode. Um, as per usual, I am Grayson, the Dungeon Master. With me, I have the same cast from last time, which is... What's up? I'm Rachel. And I'm Mitch. And I'm Sarah. Um, and if you guys remember from last time, you guys are currently hunting down, I believe it was the phase stabilizer, um, to repair the lead carriage for the Waldo's Trading Guild. Um, you guys got sent to a little bit of a desert town to try and find it, where after a bit of, um, wandering around the town and, um, I won't say messing around because there's, there's, there's a method there, maybe. Um, but after a, a bit of a investigation, um, you guys found that it was in the bank, but before you guys could take it from the bank, um, they, the bank got robbed by the perhaps uh, prejudice, prejudiciously named uh, Greenskin Gang, um, who stole the face stabilizer along with some other stuff from the bank, and then took off with on wagons. You guys followed them on horses. Um, you guys took a little bit of a walloping um, before the... Um, Wagons were ambushed by what is called a Midas worm, which is attracted to treasure. And unfortunately, um, with taking the rest of the treasure they stole, it also took the face stabilizer. Um, and that is where you guys are right now. In the desert, the Greenskin Gang has been basically thrown into chaos by this Midas worm. Um, so what is your guys' next move? Loot the bodies. Loot the bodies. Because I remember there being a ton of, like, the gang just strewn about post wormdom. If yeah. I remember correctly, I think I'm I'd fallen off my horse. Yeah. And I'm like I'm probably a good mile or two behind, right? Not quite a mile or two away. The worm came pretty soon after you fell off of the wagon. So you're maybe just like a couple hundred feet behind them right now. Ha, I fell off the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I better put on my Lamborghinis and start walking. <laughs> All right, so you are going to link up with the rest of the crew. What are you guys doing in the meantime? Looting bodies. Looting bodies. bodies. Yeah, split split it ha- midway. Like we're going right now. Um, uh, Sandy Am- <laughs> Sandy Amberg doesn't exist, so we're looting half and half. Yeah, I'm at that <laughs> wagon. You're at that wagon. Um, yeah, exactly. So unfortunately, um, all of the weapons and shore bows they had um, got pretty well damaged in the crash. But you guys <gasps> do find because um, they just barely robbed an entire bank. So. Among the bodies, the stuff that they personally took for them that didn't get taken by the Maya Storm, you guys find about probably like 200 gold pieces between you two. Holy cow. All right. So um, you just make sure to share enough with uh, Sandy Amberg. And, uh, and I think that we'll, we've, we've done ourselves real good here. Now we just need some stability. I mean a stabilizer. You mean a phase stabilizer. Uh, yeah. But we also have money. So we might want to consider what our next step is because we could – Hypothetically speaking, go without stability. I mean the stabilizer. At what point does Sandy get back? Yeah. <laughs> I assume we just have like arms full of money. <laughs> We're just talking I'm to each other. Shoving coins into yeah, pocket. Yeah, so Sandy gets back as you guys are like actively shoving gold into your pockets. Like, oh, hey, 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 it's you. <laughs> hey, what's up? I fell off the wagon. <laughs> Oh well, uh, you you look you look all right. You also, do consider that like Walking Christopher still has like three or four arrows in him. Just <laughs> <laughs> and I was like a god and just kept, kept yeah. catching all those arrows. Oh yeah, yeah. You look impeccable, probably. I think I'm probably a little yeah. sandy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was atrocious. I apologize for my jokes. I think that I think that Walking Christopher would. Uh, would 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 throw some gold your way, not all one hundred of the one the, the of the split, but wow, maybe like twenty gold. Come on, man. Worth is keeping everything he found. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho's, I'm gonna add money to my in- inventory. All right, so now that you guys have finished your looting, what is your next move? We gotta go all doing on this right now and go catch a worm. <laughs> <laughs> Just start, you know, rhythmic the footsteps. 
Well, well one, in, in this in this instance, it would probably be rhythmically dropping gold coins onto the <laughs> ground. <laughs> well, hey, that is a fair point. So we do have treasure well, now, uh, right? Sandy, it seems like this seems to be your territory. I'm going to <laughs> lay on top of this broken wagon here and hope that these arrows don't bleed me out. <laughs> And uh, I think Walk and Christopher would start to engage in a short rest <laughs> unless his friends opposed it. This oh. seems like a natural point to take a break. I got blisters <laughs> on my feet. You yeah. got arrows <laughs> out your chest. Yeah, you guys want to take a short rest? That's short rest. Yeah. How long is a short rest? Short like, rest, I think, is roughly like, I don't know. Like, I usually time at about an hour. An hour? Okay. Yeah, so then you would heal with as many hit dice as you want to spend. Arr. Which for Rachel would be zero. <laughs> yeah, I'm all good, y'all. So and I one... get like one spell back, right? Um, no, that oh. is a wizard thing. Oh shoot, never mind. So I can get a spell back? Um, yes, I believe so. It is on your arcane recovery. That is your ability that you're looking at. I'm on the front of your character sheet. Oh yeah, that's exciting. All right, yeah. So um, I might as well just because I won't have spells use all three of my hit dice. And... <laughs> And coming back. Oh, yeah, you, you don't have to, at least the way I, you don't have to declare all of them. You can roll and then decide if you want to keep rolling. Oh, really? Yeah. That's oh, how, I that's, can. That's how I decide it. <gasps> Dang it. Okay, so we got plus two. That's not that good. Okay, round two. Oh. Oh, seven. Oh. All right, so that puts me at 14. Not bad. We can, we can go a bit higher. Three. Okay, 17 hit points. All right. I'll just, I'll just, uh. It's back. It's down to 17 now. I'm going to do it once. Okay. Four. So you gain four hit points back. Okay, well, now that you guys have taken a quick nap, um, what is your next move? Well, I'm feeling significantly better. Uh, how about we uh, mosey, our, uh, mosey on our way to find this worm? We worm our way. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> he starts walking. He starts walking because that's he what he started, knows best. He started wordplay, but he did not know where it was going to go. <laughs> he did not know the end point. Ruth agrees and starts walking around in a nice little worm-like motion because he's excited. I'm just going to yeah. get on the ground and start doing the oh, worm. Yeah, just make, sure, just make sure to walk without rhythm. <laughs> There's going to be there's gonna be a lot of Dune jokes for this section of the episode. <laughs> Are we some type of... Dune squad? What is this? Some type of dune? Um, so as you guys start looking and trying to find out where the um, Midas worm went, um, you look in the sand in the general direction that it looked like it burrowed after it hit the gang, and it looks like there's this weird sort of spiral pattern like traced in the sand going off in that direction. Um, Ooh. Anybody want to give me an arcana check? Not me, yo. <laughs> Okay, so I would love to give a oh, hold up. How good am I at Arcana? Not, not that good, but but I would think that walking Christopher while he's walking would cast guidance on himself, <laughs> which is a it's, a it's a little cantrip, and he'd you know since it's like a spiritual thing, I guess he'd probably like in his head just be like, "Hey God, throw me a bone here." Are you sure you don't want me to do it? Since I got pretty good skill in Arcana, you should probably do yeah, it. I should probably yeah, but can I help you out? Yeah, of course, because okay, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, perfect. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you'll do it, and I'll help you out. Okay, so just tell me what to do. How do we do it, DM? So you are going to cast Guidance on her, which means, um, does it say which of you rolls the D4? The target can roll a D4. Okay, so Sarah, you're also going to roll a D4. That's a little pyramid one, and you're going to add that onto whatever you roll on the D20. So I'm rolling both of those? Yeah. Hey, hey, Rev, is this the I believe yes. in you as he, like, pats you on the shoulder and you feel divine inspiration. Okay, so what is that? Seven. A seven plus one, one from the guidance, and then what plus is your arcana? Your arcana? Plus five. Plus five. So what is that total? Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> Starts counting with my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so with the, with a thirteen, um, you think what happened with this whole like sort of spiral pattern in the sand is that you think that when the Midas worm took the face stabilizer, it partially activated it. So the face stabilizer is kind of 
activating a little bit and having a sort of um, resonance within the sand. And so it's leaving a pattern behind as the worm burrows through the sand underneath. Wait, so it's making those like movements? Yeah, so basically um, wherever the Midas worm is going, the face stabilizer is leaving a tr uh, pattern above it within the sand. Oh, okay, I got it. So what do you, what do you see there, Reth? I see a face stabilizer going above the sand doing this. <laughs> oh, wow. Waves. <laughs> All right. Well. I guess we'll have to comb the sands. <laughs> I'm just going to start walking. Well, that what, is your what name. What about our, uh, our horsies? Uh, your horsies um, are – where – I don't remember what happened to the horses. <laughs> leave those behind? I think that they're um, I know fine. that um, Sandy's horse is probably a ways away now because he left, he leapt off the horse. Well, what if I gave the sickest whistle on the planet and that thing just, oh. like, loves me? <laughs> kind of like in a... Give me an animal <laughs> handling check. Cool. That would be a 10. A 10? <laughs> Hmm. With I with a ten, I will give you that. But it takes about fifteen minutes for the horse to arrive. That's okay. And, and by the time it gets there, it's just, it's just kind of casually tromping towards you. That's Is faster it just than an your Uber. Horse? <laughs> all right. So you guys, now I'll have your horses. Yeah. Just a just a oh, quick comment the there that I was I was expecting like the magic eight ball answer of like try again later. But <laughs> <laughs> nice nice work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got that. Come here, horsey. Come here, horsey. All right. Um, so you guys are now, I'm assuming, travel, um, tracking this um, pattern on your horses. Let us track the – well, that's not my character's voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's go dune this up. We have some, like, awesome backing music as we're just galloping. <laughs> it's like in slow motion. My hair's growing and flowing in the wind. <laughs> growing and flowing. That's growing terrifying. That's what they say. Freaking wizards. All right. So you guys are traveling along this, the, the, the sand dunes um, for quite a while. It seems that this Midas Worm can travel mighty quickly. Also, you guys did uh, take a short rest. So it is... A, a ways ahead of you. Um, and eventually, um, after a couple hours of riding, um, you start nearing um, in the distance some canyon lands um, with um, some sparse vegetation around it, um, nothing too crazy. Um, as you get closer following this trail, um, you eventually start to smell something coppery and acrid in the air. Um, and as you get closer, you see that the Midas storm has actually breached up into um, the air, not like in the air, but like not underground anymore. Um, but it was killed by something and it looks like a ton of its meat was taken off, it was ripped off, its insides have been torn into. And it looks like most of the treasure inside of the worm is gone, including the phase stabilizer. Uh oh. Dang it. This is just like a wild sandy goose chase. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy, you are not a goose. No, we're in the sand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we better look at this wormy fella and see what friends he made. And uh, even though I'm not good at it, I'm going to try and investigate the body. <laughs> okay, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Oh, gosh. Eleven. Eleven? Is, does that get any bonuses? No. You're not going to cast Guidance on yourself. Oh, can I retroactively yeah, you can, do you that? you can post talk to do it. That's oh, fine by me. Tr quick travel back in time. <laughs> reload, hey, reload the quick God, save. God, throw me a bone. <laughs> that makes it 13. A 13, so plus two from the Guidance. Um, yeah, so I will say that with that, you see um, a lot of some feathers around and what looks like some – and as, as you closer closely look – at sort of some of the lacerations on the worm's flesh, you see what it kind of looks like beaks have bitten into it. Um, and as you s sort of look around the area, you see um, a sort of lump in the sand. And as you uncover it, it looks like there's an entire hawk in there, um, a lance hawk, which is a pretty big sized hawk. Like I'd probably say about when it's sitting, it's about up to somebody's hip. And as you are also doing this investigation, you actually see um, 
it looks like in the attack, um, it looked like it was probably a whole, um, like, flock of, of these hawks. Um, and it looks like one of them got injured in the attack and was bleeding as it flew away. So it looks like there might be a blood trail that you can follow. Well, guys, uh, it looks like birds are the culprit. Hawk to Part of me knew always knew. It's always the birds. It's always I was, wait, the I was birds. waiting for that. <laughs> Does anybody want this dead bird? I don't know if it's valuable or not. Souvenir. I'll Souvenir. Take it. Yeah, here, here, here <laughs> yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. I'll clip it on. Hands, hands over the giant bird. Like this is like, what three feet tall, and its wingspan is probably enormous. Yeah. Anyways, you could probably like wear it, like I wear it on your hope. back. <laughs> I'm just so wearing a corpse on your back. Come around. I mean, we are going like kind of Mad Max Dune vibes. Yeah, a giant like dead a bird on back is a good... For now, I'll just use it as wait, a In character. Ref, <laughs> I think that this giant bird could... It has potential to be quite fashionable. <laughs> just saying. That is that is actually uh, Walking Christopher's other job. <laughs> as a fashion, fashion designer. designer. Fashion <laughs> a, a taxidermy <laughs> fashion designer. <laughs> you know, all the rage oh. right now is, is killing a cougar and then just slapping that thing on your back hold up i do is. i do have a disguise kit i don't know what disguise i could give you with dead bird but we could go for it Wait, what do you, what do you think guys we cougar? guys we already had yeah, I was gonna ask that. <laughs> um i think that for now well i propose that there's there's blood in the sand and uh we should probably go over there if we want the stability in our lives you know i think that there was an Xbox 360 era shooter game that starred 50 Cent. It was like 50 Cent Blood in the Sand or something. <laughs> it was also really bad, too. We also need to go save 50 Cent. <laughs> <laughs> Into club. <laughs> Xbox 360? What, what are you even on about, Ren? What are you talking about? Okay, so is any, any um, tracking is going to be a survival check. Ooh. It's, I think that since we're all working together, we should... Just contribute to whoever has the highest survival boost. Don't, don't look at me. I have plus two. Me too. I have <laughs> negative one. <laughs> All right. I think me and Rach can just both roll and just whoever gets higher will be the better survival. Can only apply guidance to one of you though. Oh, that is true. Well. Um, and, I, and this time, I, and, and if you're both <laughs> rolling, I won't allow a post hey, wanna make a, to, You have to choose which one beforehand. Want to make a wager about this? How about 10 gold says that I can track this blood better than you can? I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> then never mind. And I'm going to, once again, he just pokes his own shoulder and goes, Oi, God, come on, man. And then anyways. It's, it's, it's the self-affirmation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it points at yourself. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. That's my magic. What oh. is that total? Oh, 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 that's nineteen total. Nineteen with guidance. Ooh. Okay, so, so you definitely can track this. Uh, uh, Sandy is not even needed for this. I'm just like um, along. It seems the that there yeah. is blood in the sand and going in that direction. <laughs> if if it is pretty easy to track this, because um, it's is blood on the sand um so it is very stark it is very easy to find you don't have to like look around very much um so you follow along this trail and it slowly leads into the canyon lands um and you start tracking it along these sort of um mountain tracks these mountain paths um and eventually um you start seeing some dead hawks with arrows through them that have fallen on the ground and eventually you see what you think to be the hawk that got shot the one that didn't get shot, that got um, got by the Midas Storm, that got injured by it. Um, and it is, it has an arrow through it, and it has been shot by probably some local hunters or something. Um, and just down the road, you see a, looks like a log cabin as well. Well, we found more birds. Knock, knock, who's home? What if we all get our own birds, and then we can be some type of bird <laughs> what are, squad? What are we, what some I type of propose. bird squad? <laughs> you get a bird, you get a bird. <laughs> bird cult. You know what? Yeah, no, no. Wearing Walking Christopher, he's, he's, he's seeing the entrepreneur potential here, and he's going to grab a how many trend. dead birds 
are there on the ground? Um, I'd say you found like at least five. Ooh. That's plenty. Th- this is, but these are also big birds for a small man to carry. It's true. You <laughs> are a halfling. <laughs> the, yeah, the hawk is probably as big as you are. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> I'll carry yours for you. Oh, uh, uh, that's greatly appreciated. Thank you. And so Christopher is going to try and carry two dead hawks, which is like just sticking out of his backpack. <laughs> just big old boys. <laughs> Um, and then I would hand off the rest to you. Also, he is dressed as a priest still. So there's just these bloodied hawks. Man, Anyways. you know, if I didn't think, if I didn't know better, I think this was some sort of cult. With a, with a priestly looking guy with some birds and everybody else also dressed up like the bird. I don't know about that. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're no. crazy. There's only one person dressed as a bird. Come on, we're not crazy. Hey guys, look over there. There's a cabin. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I wonder if they want any birds. Hi, we're representatives of the Bird Clan. <laughs> May, do you have any time to talk about our Lord and Savior, Haktua? Hey, let me let me tell you, uh, Sandy, you might be onto something there. I'm just saying, because we don't know who's in that cabin, and we don't know how much money they have. And there was no sign of the treasure with any of these birds, right? Um, no. Man, how these birds carry stuff away? They're not that big. <laughs> well, Red's already heading up to the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> just wander lust, just start going. I think that I think that a uh, walk in would follow Reth. Yeah. I'll okay. Following. So you guys approach the cabin, and outside there are there's two. They look like they look like hunters. There, you know, dressed in in furs and leathers and skins. Um, and as you approach, um, it looks like they are kind of. Um, I I I just blanked on the term. They're you know like cleaning the bird carcasses right now. They're defeathering them, you know, getting them ready for, uh, you know, processing, I guess. <laughs> Process the birds. Um, and as you approach, um, they both look up and they, see, and they say, Oh, some travelers. What are all you doing out here, out in these canyon lands? I'm like a bird. I only fly away. <laughs> no, we're going to copyright it. <laughs> Why... Hello there, gentlemen. Uh, we are experienced traders, and we are just in the area because we saw a large flock of birds. Come oh this yeah, way. those those land sharks that we shot down just a bit ago. Looks like you got some of them with you too. Oh yeah, you know us. We we have we have quite the talented folk among us. You know they're quite the commodity. Would you believe that? How? Oh. No, they're they're pretty they're pretty common around, are you? Oh well, not around where we're from, at least you can you can get quite the business with these hawks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But speaking of so? them hawks, do you, do you did you see where they went? Oh well, we we there was there was only just that that flock that we we shot down all of them. May I ask why? Because we like shooting down birds. All right, just making sure. <laughs> just making sure. Do you also see the fashion potential in these birds? Not particularly. You kind of look. Kind of look kind of odd in it, in it with that bird there. Well, you don't know what a feather boa is? <laughs> a feather bow? We didn't know you could make bows out of feathers. Mm, never mind. I'm wasting my potential here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have you know, sir. One day we'll come back and you'll be the laughing stock when you're seeing all of our birded up fashion and we're looking all chic. But well, we ain't we ain't here for fashion. We we out here for the for the love of the sport. Mm. Mm. Can I like subtly be uh, sizing them up to see if they've got any of this uh, treasure upon them? Um, sure. Give me a perception check. What was that total? That would be a five. A five. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I I will say um how do I how do I how do I, how do I want to rule this is the question I will say no you don't oh, see no. any you don't see anything of any value on them I just go to look at them and my eyes just go cross eyed I'm just like oh <laughs> hey what's up man is there any way that I can just like make really good friends with them so I can sneak into the log cabin to sneak around I mean, you could certainly try a persuasion check, but tell me, tell me specifically what you're trying to do here with this persuasion check. I guess, persuasion like, check. I was just, in my head, I was thinking almost being charismatic enough to be like, can I use your bathroom? And they would trust me enough. <laughs> do, you think, do you think their bathroom is going to be inside? Oh, that's a good point. These are mountain men. They're in their bathroom. <laughs> if I could take a little peek in their kitchen. 
<laughs> nah, this is a bad you idea. Want, you want to do a spice swap? I just want to sneak around their place. <laughs> hey, well, gentlemen, it seems that we're all fellow hunters here. Uh, by chance, do you have a place where we could sit down for a second and share a nice uh, cups of coffee or whatever beverage you find yourselves out here in the desert with? Um, he says, oh, that, well, that'd be lovely. Well, unfortunately, our friend Sanj, uh, he, he makes the best coffee around us. He just, he, just barely, he just barely left for a little while. Well, where'd he go, bro? Oh well, these these hawks were carrying this this weird bit uh this weird hunk of metal, and he he wanted to take it to the nearest town, Lead Rock, to to have it identified and probably probably sell it to buy some more some more supplies. Well, it sounds like if he's going to town, there could be coffee in the town. We could go help, wink, wink, and make <laughs> coffee that maybe has a hint of metal in it, huh? <laughs> I think what my friend Sandy is trying to say there is. That we'd love to congratulate that 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 man on his on his wonderful find. I, I mean, I'm telling you, there's something with these birds. They're quite valuable. Oh well, well if, if if you want to go talk to Sanch, he's he's up in that road that way, and he points um down um past the cabin. Um, he says, well, he he went down that way. Um, towns nearest town is that way. Uh, so if you want to go talk to him, he he's, he'll be down that road. Are he, these men lying? If you want to give me an insight check, you can try. Oh. What is that? <gasps> well, that's a pretty good roll. That's a total of 18. Total of 18. Yeah. Um, with an 18, you definitely, um, these men at least believe they are telling the truth. Um, they, yeah, they are not actively trying to deceive you. They're just two nice old dudes, and I instantly assumed they were trying to swindle me. That was my entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe them. Well, you know, um, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Oh. Did you just call me a hammer? <laughs> well, bef- before we leave, uh, good gentlemen, I just also want to share with you the, the good promises that if you donate to the Lord's cause, oh, no. <laughs> then many blessings will fall upon you and your prosperity. Breath and sand. And then he, like, kind of, like, other. he kind of, like, <laughs> put, he, he, like, puts out his uh, little tinder box for, like, for like a the, the alms box, the alms box, yeah. <laughs> All right, he says, "Well, I always do my share for the Lord." And he 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 pulls a string of guts out of the bird and places it directly in the alms box. <laughs> Yummy! Can't hate on other cultures. <laughs> and like, <laughs> <laughs> well, and then he's gonna whisper to to Reth and Sandy, "That's gonna take a while to clean out." We just slowly back away and get back on our horses. <laughs> <laughs> Start going down the road to the man with the st- stabilizer. All right. Um, and I will say that um, as you're going along, it becomes very quickly apparent that um, with this, this mountain track that you're going along is very narrow and rough and rocky. And it does not seem like the horses will be able to properly traverse it. So from this point on, you probably need to go on foot. Go on, get. I don't want you anymore. <laughs> we have a, Go, an emotional departure with the do- with the horses. <laughs> Who's the? Ooh, hold up. Who's the closest with their horse? Is there a way we can do a check to find out who who became the closest with their horse? I mean, during I wish that that horse came. would be animal handling to see how I all of you like handled your animal. <laughs> okay, okay, everyone, we're rolling animal handling. Okay. Which one is that? A D twenty. Seventeen. Seventeen? Twenty-one. Wow. His, because the horse was just perfectly sized for Walken Christopher, so they, they grew very close. Um, not not to discount um, Sandy and, and his horse's uh, relationship, but the Walken Christopher and his horse just grew really close together in this trip. Um, did they grow? Did, did you have a nickname for it? Yeah, uh, his, his, his nickname was uh, Runnin'. Because <laughs> I, I was walking and... And he was running, and now he's got to run away. Breath is over here like, we have horses? <laughs> no, his, his eyes are just like... No, with, with, with a 10, you guys are exactly neutral about each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those things where we just do a head nod to each other. It, it, it's, it's like you guys were in the same class. You guys never talked to each other, but you guys knew that you were in the same class together. <laughs> Sick. That's how I actually feel about horses. So it works out. <laughs> Dang it, Walken didn't sign up for emotional toil on this journey, okay? This is, <laughs> this is getting too much. 
All right, so then you guys um, continue along this mountain track that these hunters um, guide, you, guide you along to go and try to find Sanch, which is a third hunter. Um, you guys travel along this road for um, about an hour before it starts to open up a little bit, and there's a bit of a clearing. Um, everybody roll me a perception check real quick. Ooh. What are you guys rolling? The D20. Is it always the D20? Yes. Okay. Pretty much. Oh, was that a natural 20? I got a 21. I, I got a 21. Holy. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys we need to, see. You guys, you guys need to save these rolls for something that's more important. <laughs> yeah. as, as if that's how chance works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys all, um, I don't. I don't actually know what they smell like, so I can't. You guys smell something mangy, and you guys hear some some sort of snarling and breathing and some howling on the wind. Um, so when these three wolves leap out from this clearing, you guys are prepared. You guys know they're coming, and you guys are not surprised. So now there are three wolves in front of you, and they don't look like they're here to negotiate. <laughs> so well, everybody now, shoot them. Roll for initiative. Twenty. <laughs> I, I did bad. What'd you get? So, Mitch? I got a five. Five. Sarah? Do got, I add anything? You're, you? um, no, not, you won't, because okay, your initiative just then 20. is zero. She got a natural 20, though. And then Rachel? Uh, do I have a modifier? Um, it is at the top of your character sheet. Top of my character sheet. It's next to the ah, movement, yeah. That would be a 20. 20? Holy nice. crap. And so you have the higher initiative, so you'll be going first in that order. Um, now let me roll for the wolves. <laughs> Okay, so order is going to be Rachel, Sarah, Wolf, and then Wolf, Wolf, and then Mitch. So Mitch is last. Okay. Um, Look, wolves, and they just stand there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pause for a second, because this is a stat block. That I, I, I bought the stat blocks this time, but I did not grab a wolf one, even though I knew that I was running them. They're just ghost wolves. They just do their own thing. Thanks for coming out. We are ghost wolf. We are, we are ghost wolf. Oh my gosh! What uh, if they start performing for us? <laughs> That'd be sick. What kind of music? Werewolves of London. Werewolves of London. All right. So, Rachel, you are up first. Does it immediately look? You said that they're not negotiating, but does it immediately look like we're snarling and attack mode from these wolves? Yes. I want to poke one in the eye with my stick. All right, roll for it. That is a 20. Yes. All right. <gasps> Don't do me dirty die. Uh, do you have a modifier? Yes, it is in your attack line. My attack line. Uh, I am blind. Uh, in the middle box as your weapons listed, and it should give you the yeah. attack bonus next to the weapon. That would be a 19. A 19, that is definitely a hit. You thwack that wolf. Oh, bah. Um, Can I go through to its brain? <laughs> well, we'll see. Go ahead and roll for damage. I'm assuming you're using both hands for this. Oh, yeah. So then I believe that would be the D8. And then you have a modifier. Yep, so that is an eight. Well. That is an eight. So this wolf, so this wolf, you thwack it, and it kind of, um, you know, the cartoon, you know, days swirls start appearing above its head, and it's just, ooh, 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 ooh. it is really hurting. It got, I think, I think with that one hit, you gave it about three concussions. Nice, <laughs> just like me in real life. <laughs> All right, and then moving on to Sarah. Quick question. Is yes. this weapons here? Then, like, I have a budget there. That is, that's your proficiencies. That's just weapons that you are, that you know how to use, not that you necessarily have on you. Got it. I want to use my dagger. You want to use your, you don't want to use your you spells. Use spell. you I, do I forget that I have spells. <laughs> <laughs> that's your whole thing oh is a wizard. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> Reth in I'm this over moment. Here, that's Reth. <laughs> Reth in this moment goes like, wait, I'm a wizard? Wait. I, have wizard? <laughs> I have magic? <laughs> oh yeah, these hands can do things. <laughs> We're not going to comment on that. Yeah. I'm you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Acid splash. Acid splash. Go for it. Is D twenty. Twenty. Yep. I'm and gonna you're going to add your um, spell attack modifier. Uh, at the top of your character sheet. That's not a great number. Eight. 
Eight, eight total. Yep. That is a miss. You hurl the glob and it goes sailing off the cliff next to you and down and, and a couple seconds later you hear a No one said I was a good wizard. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you just forgot that you were a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm a wizard. <laughs> okay, so now it is the the first wolf's turn. This was the one that um, Sandy smacked in the head and so it is going to attempt to bite you, I believe. Yum. It is going to attempt to bite you. So that is a natural 20, so that is a critical. So now it is time for um, for Sandy to finally, finally get damaged. So oh, this is going to be a lot to roll. You're, you're getting a boo-boo, Sandy. So Uh-oh. that is going to be... Oof. That's a rough hit. That is going to be, I believe, about 15 damage. What the? F- it was it was a crit. Yeah, a natural 20 does fat damage. Yeah. So <laughs> it doubles the dice rolled. Well, somebody get my EKG ready. Yeah. So you you smack this wolf in the head, and then it immediately just goes back and bites you right in the jugular. Ow. 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 So you, <laughs> Sandy's just like, uh-huh. All right, next wolf, this one is going to leap past um, Sandy and the other wolf and try to bite um, Sarah. <gasps> no, oh, no, not the wizard. And that is going to be a 13 to hit. What's your armor class? It's, is it 10? <laughs> your armor class is going to be at the top and next to your initiative oh, above right your there. health. Yeah. So, yeah, so it hits. And it is going to deal... Uh, Seven damage. We might all die. <laughs> um, and now this one is going to um, try to bite the um, currently um, distracted uh, walking Christopher. <laughs> um, and that is going to be a 14 to hit. Miss. Finally. Walkin', walkin Christopher does a little ha and dances out the out Yeah, the no, he, he is, he's just sitting there, and then a bird flies past, and he kind of moves this, oh, bird, and the wolf just flies right past. <laughs> <laughs> bird. All right, and now Those speaking of which, it is Walk Christopher's turn. Okay. Um, you're at like four hit points, right, Sandy? About six. Six? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're fine. Ooh, the question is, do I want to... I probably do want to heal you for my last spell. <laughs> so, all righty. All righty. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Sandy for my action. All right. Uh, but at a level two, at level which two. means I'd use two D8s. And then I add. Uh, I believe it'll be your Wisdom Modifier. Yeah, I just add your base. four. You no, know, just, so. just your base Wisdom Modifier. What? It says your Spellcasting Ability Modifier. Yeah, so just your Spellcasting Ability, not your Spell Attack Bonus. <clears throat> okay, so then the Wisdom is two. Okay. Oh. So this is going to be these two dice plus two. Oh, 17 hit seven points. and an eight. Does that just put you at max health or? You're just right back in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're right back to. So nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that so was you, quite the I just swing in health. I just imagine you like <laughs> looking at that wolf biting my neck, <laughs> looking in the eye and just like smacking it and me just. <laughs> Suddenly, the blood just like surges back into my body. Or something. <laughs> yeah, no. the 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 jugular vein is currently in the wolf's mouth. It just flies out and flies back into your throat. Like, cool. I'm like, oh, gross. God, that's disgusting. Can you fix it? I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, got, right. you got a little boo boo there. You want to put a bandage on it? And okay. then with that, um, I think that Walken's just gonna use his movement to try and move away from. Okay, his... um, that will give the wolf a, an attack of advantage. Wait, not, no. not an attack of advantage. An attack of opportunity on you. Mm, when the wolf is fast enough to just catch up to me anyway. Yes. Dang. Especially because you are you do not move very quickly since you're I'm a, I'm a little man. Um, in that case, he's going to stand his ground with his bow ready. With his bow ready? Yeah. All right. Well, the thing is, do, do I get disadvantage at close range? Yes. <sighs> with two daggers ready. Two daggers ready. <laughs> All right, Kate. And we are back up to the, to the top with Rachel. Cool. Um, I was getting lost in my uh, features and traits page here. Tell me about this radiant consumption that I can do. Huh? I've got radiant consumption. Transform for a minute. Shed bright light. Oh, yeah. That's a whole ASMR thing. I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, so that you kind of, for for one minute, which I think is about 10 turns, um, you transform into this being that sheds bright light, and everything around you, including you, takes two radiant damage every turn, every one of your turns. I, wait, I think it's every 
creature's turn, they take two radiant damage. Yeah. That'll also harm me and Wrath. Yes, that will harm everybody. Mm. And then also, I believe that will also let you deal extra damage with all of your hits. I like your... Wait, hold up. Oh, you that's the one that you chose. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, I'm a I'm a not damage my friends here. Yay. Thank you. Now that uh, that wolf that bit me is just chilling, I guess. <laughs> is it still within my range of my oh, stick? Oh yeah. Yeah. You can still thwack it. Thwack. I just guess I go for another thwack. Go for the thwack. That'll be an eleven. An eleven plus anything. Oh, uh, yes, which was my attack bonus. Yes. Five, so that's a 16. That's a, 16. That's a hit. Roll for damage. Heck yeah, two hands on my staff. Just bonk over the head. That's a 10. That is a 10. So that is a dead wolf. <laughs> you smack it and its head just explodes. <laughs> Screw you, wolfie. <laughs> so that is one wolf down. Nice work, everybody. Now we are back to Sarah. Hi. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> magic. I'm going to use some magic missile. Ooh, all right. Um, and I'm going to do several of these wolves. How many of there? There's three? There there are now only two because one of them two. just died. Okay, I'm going to shoot at both of them with it. Okay, I believe you have a total of three darts, it says, on your card. Three. Okay, and those Whoa. automatically hit. So just where do you want to sign those at? That the well, I guess, I guess it's two and one. I... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Do we know the wolves? Health levels? Um, the other two have not been hit yet. At all? No. Okay, then we'll just strike two at one. Rachel has just been other. cleaning up <laughs> with the wolves. Okay, so you're just going to roll the d4 for each of these darts. So first one. Is this the d4? Yes. It's going one. to be one damage. Is it, is it plus anything? Plus five, so six. Well, it, it sh I think it says on the card what it's oh, plus. Oh, right. It says plus one. Okay, so plus one. So that is two damage two. on the first wolf. Okay, second dart. Or we'll put, we'll put it on the same wolf. One. So two again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. And then, then four. Because three. Oh, they both All took right. even amount of damage. Beautiful, beautiful. We win. Okay. So these wolves, these darts kind of whistle through the air and smack into these wolves. And they both are equally dazed now. Um, they didn't get hurt a ton, but they also don't need to get hurt a ton to die. Um, so now we are moving on to the next wolf. This one was on. Um, Sarah, so it is going to attempt to bite you again. And ooh, that is going to be a total of 22. It's not a crit, though. It's not a crit. So it will just bite you. That is going to be a total of six damage. Oh, no. What are you at? That would put me at seven. Ooh. Yeah. yeah um, you, guys, you guys are a group with no tank. <laughs> So you guys can't really take a lot of damage. But we do have money. Um, unfortunately, you can't buy health, at least this far away from civilization. That is true. Um, this other wolf is going to, this was the one that was on um, Christopher, so it's going to attempt to bite Christopher. Ooh, that is a 22. Yeah, yeah, that hits. <laughs> Good that job, is wolf. going to be eight damage. Oh. What did Grayson's die over here? <laughs> well, it's yeah. it's it's rolling two d four, so it's very um, average damage. I'm talking. Your did you say D20. eight damage, or did okay. you say nine damage? I think I said eight. Eight damage. Okay, so I'm at nine health, not eight health. Okay, sweet. Yeah, unfortunately, I found that as a DM, I always roll really good. Well, congrats. <laughs> Look to me so good. Wait, does that mean it's my turn now? Is it my it turn? It is your turn. It's Mitch. my turn. Oh my gosh. Um, Walken Christopher has no moss spells. You are out of spells now completely. Um, so he just has a little knife, a little man with a little knife, and he's going to try and just stab the wolf closest to him. Okay, roll for it. Alrighty. That's a 14 to hit. 14? Oh, wait. That no, hits. no, no, no. Ooh. I'm a liar. That's a six, not a nine. That's an 11 to hit. That is a miss. Dang it. Well, um, he just like, meh, and it doesn't hit because he's, he's kind of, he doesn't have to reach. I'm that sorry, guys. I'm also bleeding profusely. Okay, we're now back at the top with Rachel. Um, healing hands is for a creature. Does that count with my compadres? Here? Yes. All right, which one of you is dying worse? Uh, Reth. 
Yeah, I'm at seven. I'm uh, I'm gonna dap you up for <laughs> some uh, three health points. Yeah, for three hit points. Is that it? I just get to add that. Yeah, yeah, Sick. yeah. You just get to add that. And so it, but it, we got to dap up. Oh, okay. Uh, Reth and Sandy dap up. Just in the, just in the middle of this fight, while there is a wolf around Reth's leg. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, bro. Dap me okay, up, dap um, me up. and then does that say that that was an action? Uh, just says per long rest. I don't know if it did not say. You, you need, you need um, sheet. Can you? Is this for Asimar or is it for? It's for Asimar. Okay, Asimar. <gasps> I really. Don't worry. I am the. I am the healing hands as an action. So, so as an action. So, so unfortunately, that's not mean you get to, to hit. Attack. That's okay. I already killed one wolf. I'm doing my part. All right, now here. Sarah. Just yeah. I really it. like trying to do this acid splash, even though it's never worked for me. <laughs> But at this moment, it's my only option. All right, well, I'm trying to go for it. Try, try to acid him. Just roll better. Oh, what, what is, is that, that total? That's a 17, 17 on the plus dice. Five? Plus, plus five. five. Oh, so that's 100% a hit. You are Roll for it. You finally hit an acid. I think that's the first acid splash you've hit this this game, this, <laughs> this, this whole game so far. It was from the magical dap up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you felt inspired. What's the damage on it? Just says 1d6 acid damage. Oh, so then it? it's a d6 then. D6. Yes. So roll. Roll a d6. Fine. Ooh, we got splashed. Ooh. All right. Does it not add any modifiers? Or is it no, just spells, the spells gotcha. don't. That is the one thing that makes them weaker than regular attacks. But once you get into, like, stronger spells, like level well, 5 Well, yeah, once, stuff, once, you, once you get level 5, you double the damage dice. Yeah, it's wild. But you guys aren't there, and you won't be, so you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> You're cool. not going to get there, You're not going to get there. The DM said no. All right, and now it is... The wolf's turn. So this is the one that is currently on Sarah. <laughs> I'm switching my... I'm going to actually get a completely different d20 and see if my luck turns. Here, do you want to use my d20? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a natural 20. You're hey, hit about the to cable. Die. Honestly, party foul. Can we party say foul? hit the cable? Party foul. Party foul. If you roll cable, another d20, the I'm cable. leaving the room. <laughs> is it another 20? It's another 20. Oh okay, okay, just get a new die. <laughs> That's <laughs> despicable. Reth would literally die. No, it's okay. I think at that point the I'm fates just, have spoken to, that you're getting I'm prob- I'm going to keep that, but I'm going to roll another d20. <laughs> Let's find out. But we're going to keep that last roll Yeah. because the gods decided. Okay, that one was a nine, so I'm keeping okay. this one for later. Right. But we are unfortunately going to have to roll for damage for that one. And how many hit points are you at? Ten. Ten. This could go very bad for you. So that first roll is a seven. And now we need to roll again. It could be a two. That's the minimum. Um, that is a four. So four plus seven, that is eleven. So you're going to get knocked out, boss. Yeah, so you're going to get completely knocked out. Um, you're not dead. You're just downed. Do I just put negative one then? Or? Yeah. Yeah. And now it is the next wolf's turn. Reth, no. Reth, no. <laughs> no. As the uh, wolf is just like gnawing on your ear. Well, gnaw, now the one. Gnaw. Now we're onto the one that's gnawing on you. Oh. Um, that is going to be a 12 total. Miss. Thank <laughs> oh, no, Reth. That looks so unfortunate. <laughs> and like, now we are onto you, Mitch. It is your turn. Okay. Um. So I guess like. I guess I should probably attack the one that's on me, but what was the one that got acid splooshed? Um, the one that is currently gnawing on Wrath. I'm going to, yeah. It, this, it's almost dead. Walk it, it's Chris, like, it's yeah. like it, you can see into its ribcage yeah, right Walken now. Yeah, sees, Walken sees that he can steal the kill, so he's going to go steal the kill with his little dagger. He's going to jump on that wolf and go and tss, try and just stab. All right, roll for it. Wrath, I will avenge you. Can I still talk to my friends even though? Yeah. Reth, I'm not going to avenge you. I rolled a five and nine. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Rachel. Um, Drunken technique, fury of blows. Let's talk about this a bit here. Yeah. Uh, key? Is that how you say that? Yes. So if I, after I make an attack action, I make two additional unarmed strikes. I'm yeah. going to, I'm just, I'm just going to go for it because I'm seeing my friend Reth just well, suffering. Okay, I will say at this point, the wolf is almost dead. If mm. you hit it once, it probably dies. Cool. What about um, splitting that attack between both the wolves? Um, let me let me pull up the book real quick just to see the exact wording. 
but I think that'll work. So Flurry of Blows, immediately after you take the attack action, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. So as long as both of them are in range. Yeah, which they are. Yeah. So yeah. I want to so, use my main attack for the second wolf and the uh, two unarmed attack for the one non unarmed. <laughs> All right, okay, go for it. All right. What was that total? Um, That was a... Ten. Ten? That is a miss. Yeah. Use that key. Use those punches. But so now for the two unarmed strikes. Yes. Just the same the D20. Yes. And I believe that as a monk, you can use your dexterity bonus okay, for cool. these. Uh, uh, is it your wisdom? or? Your... Um, it I should be um, unarmed attacking or whatever. Okay, yeah. That okay. Should... That is a... Which one's the six and which one's the nine? Does it not? The dot's on the bottom, right? That's on the bottom, yes. Okay, so nine plus you said my dexterity? Yes. So that's a 12. That is a miss. Cool. <gasps> and then the second one. That's an 18. That is an 18. That's a hit. Roll for damage. Okay. Um, Because I'm pretty sure that, I think that as monk. Oh, no, I had an, uh, I had a, oh, on all of these, I had an unarmed bonus. Yeah. So plus the dexterity modifier on top of the unarmed bonus. Um, what, what, what does it say for the unarmed, for your unarmed bonus? Uh, three. So yeah, so that is from your dexterity modifier, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. So D4 plus three. Yeah. I clearly know how to play y'all. <laughs> you got it. Punch that, yep. punch that wolf. Seven. Okay. Um, that wolf that was non on ref is dead. I just want to slap it. Just, just, and it's, it's head just comes clean off with the slap. <laughs> That's unfair. I wanted that kill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now it is to Sarah. So now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make a death saving throw. Oh. So you are going to roll a d20. What you're trying to get is a 10. If you get a 10, you get a success. If you don't get a 10, you get a failure. Three failures means you are dead. Oh, I'm Three successes means success. you are stabilized. Okay. It has to be a 10 exactly? Um, no, if, if you were to roll a 10 or greater. Okay. Four. <laughs> Four, so that is one fail. Oh, <laughs> don't die, Red. Okay. It's Can unfair. I just keep going? No, so no? next turn, Dang we're going to roll the next one. Although, if combat is over, you're automatically stabilized because your friends can get to you and fix you. Um, now we are to the wolf that is <gasps> on Mr. Mitchell. Just on so Mr. you know, my, from the short away. rest earlier, I got my channel divinity back. Oh, good. Oh, okay. So that, you can turn undead. <laughs> I can turn undead or I can do my tricksters Which domain. Which doesn't mean that you become undead. It means that undead around you are turned away from you. It is it is very no, strangely worded. But I do have the freaking illusion the, thing, yeah, which is cool. Yeah, duplicity or whatever. But it's not really useful in this situation. Oh, yeah, regardless. Yeah, yeah. And there's only one wolf left, and... Um, it's trying to bite me. And it might die very soon. Um, that is... I'm glad I picked this size, because that's a nine total. <laughs> yeah, no, um, that, once again, um, our, our, our man walking Christopher's just dancing around this wolf. All right, back to the top with Rachel. Cool. I'm just oh, yeah, and also make sure that you, um, note that you spent one key point for that last one. I believe I put all of them in your um, attacks box. Okay, what are you going to do? Okay. Whack my stick again. Last wolfie. All right. Six. Six total. That is eight. Wait, uh, plus Oop. my attack bonus is a 12, but er, not uh, math. Holy cow, 11. 11, that's a miss. Yeah. Um, back to Sarah. Roll your next death saving throw. Okay. 16. 16, a success. <laughs> All right, we are now... On to the wolf that's attacking Mitch. <laughs> that is that's that's a um is a eleven miss. Guys, I, I think this. I don't know what it is with I think with my regular dice that I concussed. use, but they. <laughs> I don't know why what it is with the two sets that I normally grab and their d20s being so good. <laughs> Rolling two twenties in a row. Wait, I was like, die. are you kidding me? Yeah, Dang. that is. I rolled. Three twenties as combat encounter. Gonna, that is insane. I'm gonna try a new die, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, okay, so um, take take the one that I was using earlier when I rolled those two twenties. Yeah, the black one right there. Yeah, walking Christopher is just gonna once again try and stab this wolf and be like, um, insert really cool attack line here. I'm 
throwing this. I'm not throwing. I'm gonna stab you, stupid wolf. Okay, what did I get? <gasps> Finally! 22. 22 total? Yeah. 22 right. total. That is obviously a hit. Roll for damage. Yes! Okay, uh, honestly, it's not a lot of damage, though, which is kind of sad, but um, we just do our best here. Oh, oh, seven. Not I rolled max damage. damage. That's still in enough. So you no, it's stab not enough. that wolf Dang right it. in the neck. No, it is enough. You oh. stab that wolf right, right in the neck, and you pull it out, and its its throat just falls out, and it keels over. Oh, dead. that's oh, that's disgusting. Oh, gr- oh, I, I wanted the kill, but that's that's uh, that's just too much. Oh gosh. So now Reth is automatically stabilized. You're back up to one hit point. Sarah, <laughs> is it my turn to do it? No, no, no. no. You're up combat to one is hit over. Point. You guys have oh. won. So now you're back up to one hit point. <laughs> Wow. Hey, um, Reth, I'm happy you're back with us. Um, just so you know, uh, God said that I healed too much today, so uh, we're going to have to wait a little bit. That's okay. I can get by with one. <laughs> just, <laughs> one hit point's all I need. <laughs> just bleeding everywhere. <laughs> like shoving my intestines inside my stomach. <laughs> all right. So the wolves are gone. Um, you guys now have the mountain trail before you. Because um, if you'll remember, you were trying to f- to track down this hunter who you believe has the face stabilizer. So what are you what are you guys gonna do now? <laughs> I feel like Reth is in no position to travel, really. Not really. I would like to you would take a short rest. Yeah. Wait. So um, we can we know where the hunter's trail is, or um, he's just supposedly somewhere along this this mountain track. Right, Maybe he got to... eaten by these wolves. It doesn't seem that they, they looked very hungry. Mm. Should we gut the wolves? <laughs> See if there's any sign of anything. Are, are are you proposing that we camp for the night and get the stabilizer in the morning? Well, let's uh, let's take a peek and see if we can identify any sign of the hunter. Mm. Some investigating. Okay. All right, so give me some survival checks. Okay. Because since since you are cutting into and investigating these no. these animals, actually, no, um, that would be survival. I'm gonna use my old reliable D twenty. Eighteen. 18? Oh, dang. And was that with the new dice or the yep. old one? <laughs> I'm sticking with this one. <laughs> I got 12. 12? Seven. Oh, yeah. So at, within 18, um, you borrow some knives from the other people, and you cut into these wolves. And it does not look like they have had um, for like anything human for a while. You don't see any like traces of cloth or anything. Um, it, in fact, it looks like their bellies were pretty empty. They definitely did not eat an entire person. Mm. Is there any sign of the hunter along the ravine areas of this canyon? Um, I will say um, it just looks like this. This the path you're traveling has been, you know, it's been traveled. You know, um, you don't know if it's specifically the hunter, but it definitely looks like this path gets used regularly. Okay. Well, we should maybe have some wolfy stew and rest up. I would well, really like that. We could also take that this wolfy stew to our two hunter friends back at the cabin and uh, have a have a good old get together. What do y'all think? If we're not too far away, they could have something that might help. Poor Reth here. You guys have been traveling for a couple of hours, so it would be also Dang a couple it. hours back. Nah. I would Let's, like to sit here. We will <laughs> we will stay here. Reth Reth is just blood everywhere. <laughs> wolfy stew time. All right, um, are you guys doing a long rest? Yeah, let's lo- let's long rest it. We're gonna have stories around the campfire. And yeah. So, and I will say at this point, it is probably like late evening. Yeah. Long um, rest makes sense. So, for long rest, uh, it, would it be plausible for Walk and Christopher to form some type of fashionable coat and or hat with wolf and bird parts? Um, let me. What tools do you have on you right now? I have a disguise kit. Anything else? I have. My priest's pack? I don't think your priest's pack will will cut it. Not my disguise um, kit? So I will... No, your disguise kit does not have anything Dang along it. that lines. I, do, I will say that you do not have the tools available to you right now for that. This is unfortunate. I, I think that he tried for a little bit, but yeah. then realized that he couldn't do it, and then it he made him kind of sad. Go, goes to bed angry, just yeah. crosses his arms. He's, <laughs> he's just like, I know this business is going to work one day. You just don't have the stuff right now for it. It's stupid. <laughs> I would have really loved to hear you say roll for fashion. Roll for fashion. Okay, roll for fashion. <laughs> well, I, yes, that is that is the end goal. Okay, that's the end game is, uh, is rolling for fashion. Okay, so you guys cook up this wolfy stew. Um, it tastes... Tastes like victory. 
Um, um, you do try to cut around the um, section of the wolf that got acid splat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Square in its little, face. little meat tenderization. Um, so you guys um, sleep through the night. It goes early morning. Um, all hit points and spell slots are fully restored. I am unstoppable. Okay. What about uh, the key points? Key points are also restored. And your... Um, no, you, you didn't use that. Oh, your, your lay on hands is restored too. No. Incredible. Um, and also, um, for my two spellcasters, you guys can also switch out your spells you have prepared right now if you want to. Well, er, morning, everybody. Um, just so we're aware, our hunter friend who's going to a town, if he gets there, will probably sell our stabilizer. So, what do we say we try and catch him before he does that? Right like the wind. Yippee-ki-yay. Unfortunately, um, I'm no longer running. And uh, <laughs> start slowly walking down the trail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Is everybody ready? Ready? Yeah. Let's start. Let's start a moving. All right. So you guys continue along the track for about another hour um, until you reach this crevasse. It's about twenty feet across. About twenty feet, twenty-five feet deep. Um, it looks like there used to be a rope bridge across it, but the rope bridge has been is currently destroyed. Um, and along the post, um, one of the posts that used to hold up the bridge, um, there is a sheet of paper attached to it with a knife stuck through it. And along, on, on that paper is written, sorry about the bridge. Um, you're gonna have to jump it from Sanch. Uh, oh. Just because Christopher can, he's gonna pull the knife out, pocket the knife, and then <laughs> mend the paper. So then it the doesn't paper. doesn't have the hole in it anymore. <laughs> okay. All right. Excellent. So you now have a completely whole note from from Sanj. Huh. Magic. Well, we found sign of the guy, at least. Guys, I'm going to be serious. Um, I I know that I can probably make this jump with some magic, but uh, I don't know about you fellas. I want to do a flip. <laughs> How far is the fall? <laughs> um, it's about 25 feet. Can I use my quarter staff to like pole vault myself across this? And do a flip in midair, land all hot? I don't think your quarter staff is tall enough to do anything pole vaulting just, related. Just a running start, you know? Just get a little, little get boost. Really so um, in terms of um, of regular like um, long jumping, um, you can jump a number of feet equal to your strength just by default. Um, anything more than that is going to require a roll. How how far away is the other side? Uh, 20 feet. Oh, can I just teleport? You have Misty Step? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to teleport there. All right. He uses a spell slot, so just He does so use a spell slot, but... Oh, that's right. Which one, though? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's only my two one. Well, I'm feeling athletic. All right. I want to yeah. do a flip. Okay. Um, and you're using athletics for that? Or can I use acrobatics? I'll say yes. Cool. So with my strength being 10, that's my base jumping point. Yeah, pretty much. And then anything else on top of that's a little, little extra spice? Yeah, so you're, we're going to roll to see if you can make this jump. Okay. All right. Acrobatics. That is... Acrobatics. That's a 12. A 12? Unfortunately, that is not quite enough to make it. And so <clears throat> you jump across, and you almost make it, and then you just quite don't. And so you fall down into the crevice, 25 feet, and you take 2d6 damage. Ooh, that's 10 damage. Oh, hot. <laughs> and you smack into the ground. Oh. Hey, Sandy, what do you see down there? Your mom. Got him. Um, however, um, it does look like the, the rock face that you're at. It looks like really rough and weathered. So it looks like it definitely looks climbable, looks scalable. Is there anything down here with me? Can I do a little um, perusing? Not, there's some scrub brush. Some You find a really cool rock. I like rocks. Hey, Reth, do you have any rope on you? I'm thinking that we can just, you know, climb down and then climb up. No, but I have this ink pen. <laughs> <laughs> really cool, Reth. Does, <laughs> or I have a small do, bag of Do you sand. have rope, Rachel? I, it might not be written down. Do you, what, what, uh, do you have an explorer's pack or something? I have 
uh, Explorer's Pack, yeah. Okay, so Explorer's Pack does have rope in it. I just didn't write that down. Well, I well, think you have 40 feet of rope in that, so... I think so, something like that. Y'all want to scramble uh, down, we could uh, figure out... I don't know how we get this rope to the top is the thing. Uh, you could just throw it to me. <laughs> but then it's on the uh, wrong side of the... the but then balance. we can go... D- <laughs> we need to rappel down to you. And then how do we get back up? Gotta climb, y'all. Somebody's gonna have to climb. Unless somebody wants to misty step over. Hey, Reth. Um, so I can get down to the bottom of this crevasse safely with magic, but I don't know if I can get across the crevasse safely. Was that a question? Uh, I'm asking you to use some freaking magic, right? I think I picked wrong <laughs> magic. The only thing I can think of doing is Misty Step. Misty Step is your teleportation spell I'm right going to do it. I'm scared to use my spells for some reason. As a wizard, I'm scared. Welcome to being <laughs> a wizard. But I'm going to go with Misty Step. All right. Okay, so you're going to Misty Step over? Yes. Okay, so you are... Can I toss the rope up yeah. as Reth is walking by? Catch, bro. Well, Reth isn't well, walking. I'm not walking. He's walking by. He, he gets <laughs> shrouded in mist for a second, and then he appears on the other side in a puff of smoke. Magic Poof. effect. Catch my rope, bro. Do I have to do anything else, or am I just no, over there you're now? You're over there now. now. Okay. Just mark off that spell slot. I'm over here now, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Um, so what Walken's going to do, tell me if this is all right. Walken is going to try his best to scale down the cliff to where Sandy is. And if he starts to fall, will cast Enhance Ability on himself, Cat's Grace, so he doesn't take any damage from falling. Hmm, What's the casting time on that? The casting time is one action. One action. Yeah, I will say that you, because you are able to hold an action, Mm -hmm. um, so I will say that you are able to do that. So, do so I... go ahead and give me an athletics check. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, 17. So, yeah, so you you scale down the cliff face, no problem. Oh, what the heck? I did not expect to roll good there. Um, Walk- and now and now you're down at the bottom um, with Sandy Amberg. Hey, Sandy. We start climbing up my rope towards Reth. Well, Reth. does Reth have the rope? Throw nope. it to you. Okay. Okay. Um, and I will say that since you... Since, since you're in combat and you, you know how to throw things, it's no issue getting it up there. And then Breath catches it. Okay, cool. I was like, yeah, you just, can you I just, catch you, it? Yeah, you catch it. <laughs> you, guys, you guys aren't aren't that incompetent. Okay, well, <laughs> speak for yourself. I'm at one. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You're healed. I'm fully healed. Yeah, yeah that's why we did the long rest. You guys, this is such great news. <laughs> you also, I was still thinking I was half you alive. You also got back that, that's all of your spell half alive. slots. That's almost, almost dead. dead. You got back all of your spell yeah. slots from the long rest as well. That's why we long coming. rested, because you were dying. <laughs> um, just make sure that you still use the Misty Wait. Step one. Yeah. yeah, the Misty Step is still marked off. All right. So, and you are very easily able to find somewhere to tie it. Um, somebody might just have to call up to you for how to tie it properly. Um, but it gets tied up, um, and with the rope, um, there's no need to make a check, so you guys scale up. You guys are now on the other side of the, the bridge. Huh. What's going to work? Teamwork. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> <laughs> From the canyons, echoes. <laughs> Walking, you just hear walking to say thanks, God, and then starts walking. And you guys are probably just wondering what's going on. Well, Rest just looking at flowers. I don't know. After that fall, I feel like I could use a drink. So let's try to get to this town as fast as possible. <laughs> I need me a saloon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys travel along um, the road for another hour or so. Uh, but unfortunately, um, as you turn a bend in the road, you see a body lying in the road that's peppered with arrows. Um, and as you get closer, he's dressed very similar, similarly to the other hunters. Oh, man. Oh. Walken's going to pull out the note that was from, what's his name? Sanch. Sanch. And look at the guy. Look back at the note. Look back at the guy. Well, um, he was like a son to me. <laughs> <laughs> he was like the brother I never met. This This guy's prerogative in life was to tear down a bridge and then die. So, uh... <laughs> Let's loot him. 
and then Watkins going to go loot his body. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, it does not seem like he has anything on him, including the face stabilizer. It is not there. Is it Sanch at least? Can I identify the guy who's well, wasting my never, time? You've never <laughs> seen him, but it looks like this is probably Sanch. This this guy, look at this face. He looks like a Sanch, right? <laughs> it's very Sanchy. Mm-hmm. Lots of Sanch energy here. So yes, it looks of... like he got ambushed by something, which shot him with arrows and killed him and took whatever he had with him. We're taking a little investigation upon the arrows. <gasps> That's a smart idea. All right, okay, give me an investigation check. What specifically are you looking for? Let's see if, uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do we, what do we want to look for here? Maybe there's like... Fingerprints. Fingerprints. <laughs> Maybe there's like <laughs> distinguishing features about the arrows. Who wants to, who wants or... to make this look? Who's got some good uh, eyeball skills here? My investigation is just... I'm just basic, dude. I'm I'm working at a deficiency. <laughs> Surprisingly, I'm intelligent, but not that good Wise. at investigation. No, no, but your investigation it should have just plus your intelligence. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Does it not? It just says plus three. Yeah, yeah which plus is which three is, is really good. It's better than anybody else. Yeah, you're the best investigator here. Oh, I guess I can do it. Take a drag off a split. <laughs> right. and take a look. <laughs> 10 um so i will say with with the 10 um you don't really see anything unique about these arrows they just look like you know they don't look like they're you know rough hewn arrows it looks like they were made somewhat professionally like somebody who pretty well knows what they're doing but you do see a toothpick on the ground next to the body as you start looking around you see another toothpick about 20 feet away from that one and another toothpick about 20 feet away from that one breadcrumbs I think we should uh, follow these toothpicks. What do you think, Reth, the one who found the toothpicks? Sure. Maybe they think they're some type of toothpick gang. What are we, some kind so, of toothpick squad? Just a bunch of <laughs> Sylvester Stallone-looking guys. Hold up. Let's, okay, let's quickly recap the different squads that we've had. We've had Dune Squad. We've had Bird Squad. We've had Wolf's, Ghost Wolf Squad. We've had, uh, and now we're on to Toothpick, toothpick squad. squad. Just the green face. Uh, I I prefer to avoid saying okay. slurs, but just, it's okay. Just <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we should definitely follow those who dropped the toothpicks. Mm-hmm. Or I guess just follow the toothpicks. Yeah, I mean, I have plenty of dental care uh, opportunities that I can <laughs> I can propose. Am I right? Okay, so you guys follow this trail of toothpicks um, along for another ways. Um, and and th- right now the toothpicks are they're going off the road deeper into this these um, sort of mountainous canyon lands, um, and you follow for a while through this through this rough wilderness, and eventually you come upon a smattering of bodies who look like they have just been ripped and torn apart. Man, what gang is killing other gangs now? They're murdering with toothpicks. <laughs> Really cool. Um, really cool. Do they guys, have any ones that aren't broken? Goodness. Um, as you guys approach closer, these these look to be like they, they're dressed in like leather and fur armor. They look to be some sort of bandits. Um, and all of them, at least the ones who still have faces attached, um, look like they have toothpicks hanging out of their mouths and um, pouches of toothpicks at their belt. <laughs> well, <laughs> still one. <laughs> yeah. I think um, we found the culprit of the of the floss brigade. Can Walk and Christopher add bag of toothpicks to his inventory? Sure. <laughs> Phenomenal. Okay. But are okay. they flavored? Um, and around this pile of bodies, along a cliff face, um, you see what looks to be a cave entrance and some streaks of blood leading inside. And uh, among these bodies, you do not see the face stabilizer. <sighs> the toothpicks did it, guys. The, the, there, there's clearly some toothpick monsters in that cavern, and I don't know if we've ever faced anything like that before. But man, we've we've come this far to get stabilized. We might as well go all the way. Yeah, yeah Reth, you should it. lead the way. Why? Because <laughs> you do I the best. I don't even know where I'm going. You found the toothpicks, man. Okay. Come on. Is it the same thing? Investigation? Am I just? Doing well, that you guys again? need to investigate to <laughs> go need... into the cave. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg, Ref. Which is very easy because he's at leg level level to you. I'm literally pulling your leg because I'm like half your height. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so you guys are going to go investigate the cave? Mm Mm-hmm. Excellent. So you guys go into the cave. It is dark inside. I can um, tell you that Walking Christopher is on guard and does not have dark vision. On guard? 
he's 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 scared, but it's gonna be okay. Um, even though it probably doesn't help him see at all, he can cast thaumaturgy, thaumaturgy, whatever. I don't think thaumaturgy will help. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, it won't help. Um, I know it could that make his eyes I know that glow. the explorer's pack does have torches. I, I don't have, I have dark explorer. vision. So you'll be fine. I have an ink pen. I can, <laughs> I can burn incense. <laughs> Br- carry a candle in with Wait, you. Wait, does my orb glow? What have, orb? Not enough to shed light around you. Do you have the spell light? No. Dang. I think Asimar have dark vision, though. They I do. do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, <laughs> hey, um, so, Sandy, uh, me and Reth can't see... I've Do you got think some you torches can... here? Oh, I can see fine. Oh, you can take oh, my torch. Oh, hey, hey, thanks. That was hey, easy. That's so kind. Here, wow. take some gold, and he's gonna like drop you like two gold. I'll give you my yes. other hawk if you want. <laughs> hey, that I was a gift. Okay, hawk yeah, one and hawk two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so you guys venture into this cave, um, and after a few twists and turns, um, go inside. And you guys enter what looks to be the central section of the cave. Um, and inside, there is a bear. But the bear is no longer alive. The bear is currently being dug into by what the viewers might, might remember as a dimensional shambler. Um, and anybody who's listened to the second episode of the podcast up to the end should know what the dimensional shambler is. It is this um, humanoid-shaped um, beast um, with a long um, beak at the end of its face with um, sort of looks like human teeth within the beak. Um, no other features on its face. It looks fleshy and red and pink um, with, um, I, for, I, I, I did not look up in between episodes what sort of leg it is, but like that sort of bovine leg you know, that goats have, um, that sort of leg and with long talon fingers. Um, and you guys aren't aware of this, but um, Commodore Finch told the last group um, that these dimensional shamblers um, are kind of enemies with the guild because the guild kind of uses, um, well, I think I called it the outside, um, which is basically their home, um, to kind of expedite their travel through the astral plane. Um, but next to the spare, there is a bandit corpse, and you guys can see the phase stabilizer there. <gasps> but the, sh- the dimensional shambler is in between you and it. All and right. it is not looking happy. It is not looking to negotiate here. Oh, I thought we were stealthy. Or I guess we have No, torches. you guys have torches. That's awkward. I can see you. <laughs> That's unfortunate. And it's just pitch black other than... Pretty much. Oh, gosh. Um, so this this thing is just barely seen by your torchlight. And it kind of screeches as it sees you. Now, everybody, roll for initiative. Oh, gosh. I think we're going to have some character deaths here, y'all. All Wait. right. Okay, I Mitch. have an idea. Dude, eight. Why is my eight? initiative so bad? <laughs> um, Sarah? Does it plus anything? Yeah, it's um, plus well, top Well, you don't have any show. dexterity, so you just get what you roll. Seven. Seven. Oh, dang. Um, Rachel? Eleven. Eleven. Oh. Oh, oh it's no. The mental, the, mental, the mental sample doesn't get much better. Um, it got a four. So lucky for you guys. You guys look at go first. Oh, gosh. Can I make a, make a choice? Yeah, let's hear the choice. Can I charm it? <laughs> um, <laughs> on on your turn, Reth. Goodness. Just as like a question, a general question. Um, what what does a specific spell say? You attempt to charm a humanoid you see within range. It is not technically classified as a humanoid. Oh, it just looks like a humanoid. Yeah, it's that's just the shape of it. <sighs> humanoid. It means like any like any sentient races, like elves, dwarves, halflings. Darn it, never mind. My question is void. Okay, so I already cast that Rachel, spell on the woman that you are first the in the order. I want to start gentle like maybe. I don't know. <laughs> are we going straight attack mode with this guy? This thing is not looking like it's here to negotiate. This thing is in attack mode and it is it is getting ready to pounce. Well, I have a dart. <laughs> kinda wanna start there. Okay. Ooh. 17. 17. Okay, that is a hit. So go ahead and roll for damage. That's a four. Four? Copy that. Just poke it real quick. 
Yeah. So the dart sails through the air. Whoosh, and it hits into the dimensional shambler. And as it does, um, there's kind of this flash of blue light um, where it hits the shambler. Um, and in sync with that flash of blue light, your ether amulets that are around your neck, which, if you'll remember, um, were cast upon you by a Pathfinder Terrence, which will which tether basically tether you back to the guild. Um, they also flash at the same time. Um, and now moving on to Mr. Mitchell. Ooh. Okay. Oh man, I'm trying to because how far is it from us right now? Um, it is, I would say, about 20 feet away. Okay, so I don't have disadvantage with short bow. No, you do not. Okay, sick. Um, but then also the stabilizer is like an additional 20 feet after that, right? Roughly. Brutal. Um, why does my guy have tiny legs? Okay. Um, first as a bonus action, I'm going to cast shield of faith, which means that my AC goes plus two for the next 10 minutes. Mm. Okay. So, so essentially for the rest of the combat encounter for a, Unless this thing just wants that to That would be out. about 100 rounds. Yeah. <laughs> that would be exciting. And then I'm going to... I would, I would end it before 100 rounds. So I would just either say, you all die or it dies. Yeah. And then since Reth is already carrying another torch, can I drop my torch and bow it up? Or yeah. no? Yeah. Okay. So your torch will stay lit while it's on the ground. Yeah. I drop it on the ground, pull the bow back. Hey, toothpick monster, suck on this. Suck on this toothpick and shoot an arrow. <laughs> what is that? That's a, is that an 18 or is that 13? It's your die. <laughs> 13 plus 5, 18 total. 18 total. All right, so that is a hit. Roll for damage. <gasps> Yay! I'm going to roll. Maybe you guys are finally actually hitting stuff. Okay, that's 5 damage. 5 damage. Not bad, not bad. Could be better, but not okay. bad. And now Sarah. Magic missile. Magic missile. All right, go for it. And I'm assuming you're putting all darts on it. Yes. I assume you don't want to just hit the bear just to make sure it's, <laughs> de it's dead for real. Just one for fun. Okay. If I remember correctly, I just do one of these for each dart, right? Yes. And then each one is also plus one. So five. Ooh. Four. Two. Okay. And now it is the shambler's turn. The shambler. So, first off, um, yeah, so it is going to turn to Sarah, and then um, along its, its featureless face, above its beak, um, flashes a bright red moat of light um, for, a for a couple seconds. Um, give me a charisma saving throw. Did you just call me Sarah? Yes. My name is Rev. Well, I'm telling Rev. you. <laughs> It looks at red. calls me Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is it still the 20? Yes, it is still the 20. And then it's going to check again. It's going to be your saving throw, which is above your skills. Seven. Seven. So um, this, this Reth looks into this moat of light, of red light, and just this sense of immense dread comes over him. And so you are now frightened until your next turn. It's a um, bad high. Let me <laughs> look it up real quick. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. I'm frightened. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> okay, so so long as you're frightened, which will last until y the end of your next turn, um, you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of the sphere, which is the Shambler, is within line of sight, and you can't willingly move closer to it, which I don't think will be an issue, that one. So basically, you'd have disadvantage on everything while you can still see the Shambler. Even, like, if I wanted to put a shield on my next turn? Um, anything that requires a roll okay. has disadvantage. Um, and now the Shambler is going to leap from the bear and is going to attempt to claw... Um, Sandy. <gasps> no, Sandy, watch out. That is going to be a 15 to hit. I'm at 11. 11? So that hits. It is going to deal... What do you mean you're at 11? Hit points. No, no, oh. it's for your armor class. Oh, I'm at a 15. Okay, so then it, it hits. Okay. And that's going to be 5 damage. Cool. 
Now I'm sitting at a six. Oh, yeah, because you fell down the, <laughs> you fell down the fall crevice. Down. <laughs> Went into this battle. You almost made it. Yeah. But not quite. Um, no. And that was the Shambler's turn. So now, because back at the top, with you, Rachel. Cool. I'm hurting. Um, in retaliation, now that we're in proximity here, stick time. Stick time. All right, do you want to use any of your key abilities? Um... Because you can use Flurry of Blows again and just put all of them on on the bad boy. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, go for it. Fury of Blows, baby. That is a 21. 21, that hits. And then... Five. Five, okay. Getting some low damage rolls, y'all. And then uh, for the two unarmed T20s again. Yes. Come on, baby. A that twenty two. Twenty two, that is another hit. And seven. Nice. I'm angry. <laughs> I'm good <laughs> angry. I think you did more damage with your fist than the staff. Twenty. Okay. Twenty? Not that. Oh, okay. And five. Dang. You were just smacking this thing around. Poof, 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 poof. Okay, so after this, after all of this, it kind of screeches and um, kind of gets low and gets ready to, to fight again. And now we're on to Mitch. Hey, keep that up, boss. And he's going to pat you on the back while you're just slugging this creature and heals you. I'm going to do a channel, because how much health are you at? Seven? Six. Six? Mm -hmm. And we want to bring it back up to 21. Yeah, I'm going to do a level two. Um, cure wounds. Which is going to feel real good. Mm. Um, feel like a nice warm hug. Mm -hmm. mm. Big ol' hug. Okay, we're going to do two D8s plus my two. Ooh, 13. 13. Nice. So that puts you at 20. Nice. Yes. So I'll make up to full. Okay, and Are you now feeling better, buddy? I'm feeling so much it better. It is Sarah's turn. Wait, that was 13? Okay. Yeah. That puts me at 19. Oh, because you're at six hit points? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, you're at 19 then. I feel much better though. <laughs> I'm alive. Yeah. For now. Until he rolls two nat twenties again. And then we all die. I have the, the cursed nat twenty die though, so Yeah. Oh you do have the cursed nat twenty. I'm not sure if I have to roll a dice for the shield. Uh, I don't believe so. Can I just Let me let me take a look at it. Shield. Is that the one that I casted on myself just barely? I don't believe so. This this only lasts oh. for one round. Uh huh. Um, so usually you would use this um, since it's since the casting time is one reaction. You would use this um, as you are being hit by something. I think I think your health is fine. You should just lay on the damage. All right, I'll just kind of hang out for this round, you guys. I'm just gonna. I'm really scared right now. I'm gonna be over yeah. here. Oh wait, yeah, you're scared. He's gonna you're scared. Fear. Hey, Reth, what's Eldritch what's gotten fear. into you? Ah, what'd you say? Reth, ah, oh my ah. gosh. Stop being so antsy. It's ah. weird, Reth. Goodness. I'm going to stand over here. Look, it's just a toothpick monster. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you going to do anything on your turn? You can still do stuff. You just will have disadvantage on any. I'm just going to go stand over you're, here. You're, you're, okay, you're just going to stand over there? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go get some fresh air real quick. Okay. Hey, so you're just passing your turn? Breath, what the freak, man? <laughs> okay, so now this dimensional shambler is is going to turn to Rhett, not to Rhett, to Walking Christopher Hi. and attempt to bite him. Yum. Ooh, that is, I think, a 23 to hit. You know, that actually hits, and it frustrates me because I literally cast a spell on myself so that wouldn't happen, but hey, whatever. <laughs> Does that interrupt my concentration at all? Um, do you need concentration for your spell? Uh, for Shield of Faith, yes. Then, yes, that, that will affect your concentration. So you are going to need to make, I believe it's a constitution. Let me double check. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because he's concentrating so hard on being a faithful little lad, you know, to a, to a god that steals. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Rest over in the corner. <laughs> Those were some nice punches, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This fury of blows. <laughs> Got some bloody it's, it's, knuckles, it's, it's, it's maybe. A, it's a flurry. Okay, so, yeah, so flurry. constitution saving throw, the <laughs> DC is 10. Constitution saving throw, which yes. is over here. Um, hey, I'm not, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. 
I got 12. Okay, so you succeed in, you succeed in concentration, um, and then I believe have you take seven damage. Mm, that's brutal. Okay. And then now give me a charisma saving throw. Oh, yo, I got that. I got Riz, y'all. Okay. At least I, I don't have it in real life, but Walken does. Okay. Ooh. That is a 14. 14. So you succeed on your saving throw. Congratulations. Ooh. Okay. And then now we See, are... it's not that bad, Reth. Come on. Ah, wait, I'm done being <laughs> Yeah, yeah you're, you're no longer frightened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the top with Rachel. My in Our range. damage dealer. Yeah. I'm in range with my staff. Well, yeah, because um, he moved up within melee range to you, and then the Shambler moved to bite him, so it was still within range. But also I had to touch him to heal him, so yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. I pretty much went like, hey, buddy, I got you, and then the two yeah, no, big so, monsters so it, it tackled has not, me. It has not moved out of your range. Cool. Well, yeah. seeing as I, I took that swing... Connected with the staff and then use fist. I'm assuming I drop the staff. I'm gonna do a click like cartwheel, grab my staff, throw, and just go for this attack here. That's a twenty, not nat. Okay, that's a hit. More for damage. That is a cursed die. What the freak? Yeah, no, I, I don't know what it is with that die. It is insane. And that's a ten. It's a ten. <laughs> nice. So this thing is really starting to hurt. <laughs> You've done so. M- Have any of us touched it except for you? I think, okay, I think that I put one toothpick arrow in it. Yeah, well, and um, Sarah Magic Missled it. And Sarah which Magic Missled it, does, which doesn't, did a lot doesn't of need a roll, so. Yeah. That, was, that was a good. Uh, Mitch, your turn. Hey, y'all are doing really great, um, but let me finish this off. And he's just going to, like, pat the monster and do inflict wounds on it. Okay. Um, I will cast, do I choose right now what I cast it at? Yes. Okay, I'm going to cast it at level two, all in, baby. All and, right. Um, this is going to be a melee spell attack, so plus yes. four. Does a 20 non nat hit it? 20? Okay. Yeah. Roll for damage. Oh, gosh. Okay. So on and a is it, hit. Is this necrotic damage? This is necrotic damage, okay. and it's going to take 4d10 of necrotic 4D10? damage. 4d10? 4d10. Because Ooh. base inflict wounds is 3d10, and then for every spell slot above, it uses another one. Sheesh. That, oh, that was kind of a low roll. 15. 15. And since this is necrotic damage, I will tell you it is resistant to necrotic damage, so it takes half damage. Okay, so. Which I believe is, I'll just just round it up. To eight. Okay. Yeah. Poke, and then it's just like, we're. So this necrotic energy washes over it, but doesn't seem particularly phased by it. Um, and now, Sarah, okay. you're no longer frightened. You, um, you got I, this. My brain is in a good place now, you guys. I just have a few questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a question real quick. <laughs> just want to, this was curious. Yeah, R- 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 excuse me. Um, R- R- Reth and Sandy are over here just wailing on this, and, and uh, Reth is like, um, excuse me, I have a question real quick. <laughs> I have a few, actually. Um, so the face stabilizer, right, that's our... Uh, yes. uh, how far away is that from us right now? It is about, I think, like 35-ish feet away. Okay. Um, then this could work. Um, how, how heavy is it? Um, I think I said it, I think it was like in the range of like 20, 25 pounds that last work. episode. Okay. I was going to just like get a hand to go grab it and we could run. But uh, I guess I'll do some acid splash. Acid splash. Go for it. Splash some acid. You don't got to tell Reth why. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So 19. 19, that's a hit. You guys are doing Whoa. you guys are doing really good this combat encounter, and that is very good <laughs> for you guys. Because this monster is a lot harder than wolves, but somehow you guys are doing <laughs> you guys are, you guys are actually hitting stuff this time. I also I mean And that's that's the action economy is that one creature is weaker than multiple creatures. So acid that's splash good. doesn't cost any spell slots, so you can cast it for free. Yeah, that's why I just, just roll going damage. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, roll damage? Yeah. yeah. That was the six? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. One. <laughs> no. <laughs> Less an acid splash and more of an acid drop. That's okay. At Pink. least it's something and not on the ground. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so now it's back to the Shambler's turn. And now at this point, it is really starting to hurt. It is almost starting to leak the, um, some like purplish and blue light from a lot of these wounds it has taken. That's really gross. Mm. Um, and so now it is going to screech and kind of roar up into the air. And then this sort of... Um, Almost a tear in fabric appears behind it of this foggy purplish light, and it turns and it, and it 
it kind of like reaches out with its hand and peels this tear open and starts to step through it. And Rachel, since you are within melee range, um, you will have an attack of opportunity on it if you want to take it. Yeah. I'm taking it. Okay, go Whack. Back. We'll see if hit. Yeah, D20. I'm also no, in, I didn't I'm also hit. in melee the one range, time, right? Yeah, the one time with time. that die. Yep. Am I also not in melee range? Because I pushed um, it. You don't have any melee weapons out right now because you do have I, a short bow. Do I get a um, modifier for within melee range opportunity attack? No, just just it's a it's a standard melee attack. Cool. Yeah, that was definitely not gonna hit. That was three. <laughs> I just I saw it and I was like, oh. <gasps> okay, so then it's it it kind of goes into this tear and tear, and then it closes behind it and completely disappears. And so now the dimensional shambler is gone. Well, 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 let's grab that stabilizer and get on out of here. So congratulations for convenient. not only surviving your first encounter with a shambler, but also driving it away. Here, while you guys grab that stabilizer and get stabilized, I'm going to investigate for any goods. <laughs> um, okay, give me an investigation check. I imagine that he just goes over. He's like looking at the walls. He goes yeah. over to the bear, opens its mouth, closes the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You Hello. see, you see some, ba- you see some bandit in pulls there. out a nice looking tooth. Anyways, you're um, tapping the walls. I'm rolling investigation. Yes. <laughs> Dang it, Walken wants to, but he's not good at it. Eight, eight. Um, you find some some tufts of grass, some old shedded bear fur. <laughs> you know, guys, call me crazy. Okay, we've been we've been talking about the potential for this these birds and wolf pelts, bear. <laughs> What do we think? A hundred percent. That's what I'm thinking. He's just going to start pocketing tufts of bear fur. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you guys now have the face stabilizer in your hands, and you guys also have your eth- your ether amulets ready to go. Send you Walken, back to the field. Walken probably smells atrocious from all the dead animals that have been around him and just all over. Ruth kind of likes it. <laughs> 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 it. Smells like victory. All right, y'all. Excellent. Um, this has been uh, quite the ride. I, uh, I hope that we uh, didn't endanger that town that we uh, robbed. Not really? It wasn't us. No. Do you still have that hat? I've been wearing it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I propose that we, uh, we head on back. What do you guys think? I'm just kind of still stunned staring at the thing where I missed the opportunity attack. I'm just like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, why not? Guys crushing your ether amulets and heading back? <laughs> yeah. You don't want to crush these amulets, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get down you on You don't want to tell me twice. Okay, so you guys grab the end of it and crush the, the sort of pearl. And after a brief um, stint through the realms where you feel like you're being stretched like putty with all this blue light around you, you guys are back at the plateau with the Wild Those Trading Guild. Um, Commodore Finch sees you arrive and says, Oh, I, I see you all have the face stabilizer in hand. Perfect. We now we are just waiting on the on the last item. Um, I will have my engineers uh, begin installing this right away. So hopefully we can all be on our way and be away from here. Will I have a stable life now? I thought that was part of the whole reason that, we went out friend, was to learn about it. It's all up to you. It's kind of a spiritual awakening moment, don't you think? Hey, well at least we made some money. <laughs> Clap. Or collab. <laughs> High five. High five. I wish we collab. were back at the saloon. <laughs> <laughs> then just kind of takes a seat and is like, I, well, thought I, I thought that I'd be stabilized. Our drink's on you, Commodore Finch. Come on. <laughs> I, 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 do think, I do think a good drink is in order. And he hands you about a quarter of a bottle of beer. I feel loved. <laughs> All right. So now that you guys have returned, um, what do you, what do you what are, what are your characters going to be doing in the meantime while while we wait for the for the final group who we have not met yet to return? Ooh. Well, I don't know. I feel like Reth is just going through this like new phase in his life where his like third eye is just opened and he's just like wants spiritual harmony for everyone. Uh, so essentially, I'm saying he's now a hippie. <laughs> now a hippie? Yeah, because before he was just like some guy. Yeah. You know, just he's, like he's made along. the. I, I like to think that he's made the hawk like into like earrings. Yeah, and yeah. like incorporated <laughs> it into like a tasseled coat, maybe. Yeah, so gotcha. now he's just going to be a little bit more loud about his spirituality. Gotcha. Hey, good on good on you, Reth. I think that walking is you know after after not after losing running and uh, just you know 
realizing that all of his schemes have amounted to nothing and that the money he earned just he just found it he's kind of questioning what he's doing with his life and he's like he's like hey god i don't come to you for answers i come to you for cash but still what what the heck this is this is weird. So kind of the opposite yeah. of what I'm going through. Yeah, kind of the opposite. <laughs> You're having a spiritual awakening, Reth, and don't. Hey, I'm happy for you, dude. But I'm I'm starting to doubt all these uh, all these different businesses and religions. I'm spiritual death. You yeah, would say. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I I think I might need to go my own way. And so he's just kind of out on the port, just like looking off into <laughs> space. <all. laughs> pondering like probably a musical number is like on the verge of starting anyways <laughs> all right we know what the drunken master's doing <laughs> <laughs> he's earning his name yeah. <laughs> all right excellent well thank you all for joining me for this session of studios and dragons um i'm i was very happy to play with all of you with all of you guys unfortunately this is our last session um with with this current group together and i mean not to dig on you guys or the previous group i am very excited for our next group we have some very fun personalities in there that i think will be a lot of fun to play with uh but i am sad to see you guys go um and i hope that you guys had fun here and i hope that the audience enjoyed you guys um now moving on um studio studio 76 is, has some major projects in the works that are currently in post-production um quiet arlo and dating a dead guy so look forward for those um i think they are both very fun and interesting projects i'm very excited to see those completed so just keep an eye on our social medias um our instagram posts a lot about updates for these sorts of projects wsu studio 76 on instagram um and also um coming up soon is a fall a fall film fest um where a lot of indie films will be submitted. So if you have anything you want to submit, um, check out our Instagram for that, or if you just want to go to see them. Um, again, all the information is currently on our Instagram. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you to the viewers for listening, um, and good night.